um, so um, the the next next talk also is very relevant. Um, we're not talking about disease, but maybe saving the disease of the earth. So as you know, uh, Singapore is an island, uh, and and we are very close to the sea. So one very pressing problem for us and also for the rest of the world is sea level rise and coastal hazards. Right. So um, so with this, we have Professor um, Philip Liu, who is a distinguished professor from Department of Civil and environmental engineering to, to give us uh, uh, some insights on his work on uh, studying sea level rise and coastal hazard and what are you, uh, some of you PhD students uh, who come in can help to contribute to addressing this very important problem that is uh, we should really look into. Uh, Prof, Prof Liu, thanks for giving us some time uh, to, to answer the question previously, but we, we, we want to hear your talk now. Over Thank to you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much for the introduction. Um, let me let me talk a little bit about add some more information about myself, and especially in terms of uh, with respect to the res uh, PhD research. Um, I actually grew up in Taiwan and get a bachelor degree uh, from National uh, Taiwan University, and after that I went to the United States. I went to MIT uh, for my master and a PhD study. Um, I actually get a master's degree first and then went on to PhD. I spent about total five, a little more than five years uh, as a graduate study at MIT. Um, from there, then I went to Cornell University and uh, I stayed there uh, for more than 30 something years uh, and working uh, as, a, as a professor, as an assistant professor then all the way to the full professor. Then in 2015, I came back to Asia and joined uh, NUS uh, as a professor in the civil and the environmental engineering uh, department. So in the sense that uh, I have gone through the full cycle, um, uh, take the journey that as a, as a student growing up in Asia and went to West uh, to the United States and get educated, higher education, uh, in the Western culture. And now I'm back in Asia and in Singapore. And so uh, during this journeys, I have uh, advised more than 30 PhD students. And most of them actually uh, stay in academics and uh, have become professors, faculty researchers in, uh, in the different universities around the world. And so if you have any general question about graduate study about PhD research and feel free to ask me. Uh, this doesn't have to be the topics I'm going to talk about today. Um, okay, so um, today I'd like to talk about one of the research area that I have been uh, working on in in uh, last 20 something years. And um, this is really uh, the research area that I've been always interested in is the coastal processes uh, and the coastal engineering. Um, more specifically, this problem, so for coastal hazard, um, is really a very relevant uh, social, uh, societal uh, impact for research in, at particularly in, in, in the whole, around the world. Now, on, on top of that, then we uh, start to realize that due to the climate changes, sea level is changing, is rising. And uh, because of sea level uh, rise, it has a significant impact uh, uh, on the so-called coastal hazards. And uh, so um, this, this problem is, uh, is very different from, from the previous talk, uh, which is focused on uh, the application of engineering uh, technology in the medicine. And this is really a problem dealing with a much larger scale problem, societal problem uh, in the world. And, um, and as I, I can, in this slide, I show you here, we basically talking about two types of a coastal hazard, although I will focus on one of them. One is the so-called storm induced uh, flooding in, in, in the coastal area. Another one, which also is my pet research topic, is a, a so-called tsunami uh, hazards, which is caused by the earthquake or landslides and different reasons. Coming back to storm surge, and 
that is related to so-called hurricanes in the North America and the so-called typhoon in the South uh, Asia uh, regions. And um, then um, the, the storm surge is caused by the weather events. And when you have a typhoon and uh, going around the, the largest uh, oceans and uh, bringing a lot of uh, wind and bringing a lot of uh, rain and cause the damage then in the coastal regions. And so um, I will show you today, uh, not all the details, but was uh, trying to convince you that this is a real serious problem around the world, especially in particular right now, I mean the so-called so South China Sea regions, and we need to have a strategy to deal with this uh, issues and, uh, um, and, uh, and, the and the save, save the human life, basically. Okay, so this first, talk about what do I mean by um, a coastal hazard. Coastal hazard means a hazard occurring in the coastal area. Why do we care? The reason is that the, 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 the increase, the, the rate of uh, increase of uh, uh, urban development in the coastal re region is uh, uh, very amazing. When we define, if we define the so-called mega city in terms of a population, say any, any mega city we can call it is the when the population is, uh, is more than 10 million people. Now, uh, roughly speaking, we have more than 30 mega city uh, in the world, but most of them actually is along, uh, uh, located along uh, on the coastline near the 10 kilometers uh, or around you know, 100 kilometers uh, around the, near the coastline. Now come back to South China Sea regions and some of the big cities such as Shanghai and uh, Tokyo, those are two uh, biggest city, mega cities. They're all on the coastal, uh, coastal line, coastal regions. Then in China, there are other mega cities uh, such as Tianjin, Guangzhou, and uh, Shenzhen. They are also uh, co uh, located very close to the coast. And uh, so they are, a lot of the coastal cities are still being um, developed, especially in the Asian countries, in China in particular. And uh, so these cities actually are subject to uh, typhoon or hurricane or tropical uh, cyclones um, annually. So in this particular um, slide, I simply want to show you the, the, all the typhoon or hurricane tracks uh, between uh, say eight, uh, 1980s uh, to, to, uh, to uh, 2000. And uh, hopefully uh, this gives you the impression that there is so many of the typhoon uh, happens or, or hurricanes happens in this region, all right? So if you zoom into the uh, South, uh, just simply China, and this diagram shows you that annually on the average, there will be uh, something like a 10, uh, typhoons actually makes a landfall uh, on the east coast of China, okay? And uh, so every year it fluctuates a little bit, but the, uh, the average number is somewhere around uh, eight, nine or 10 uh, typhoons, which makes a landfall. And uh, this just to show you um, in two, 2013 alone, uh, these are the tracks of the typhoons which made a landfall in China. And uh, the reason I show you this is that you can see that this type of uh, uh, phenomenon is, is a very large scale, covers a large area, and is spatially varying. That means that it's not always happened on the same location at the same, uh, uh, same fashions. It changes in space, in time. So this is really a multi-scale uh, type of, uh, uh, multi-scale problem. And uh, so the, the not only change, uh, it's non-uniform in time and it's also it's non-uniform in space. In this um, diagram, you can also see that the purple color indicates the region where the surface elevation is between zero and 20 meter. So there's a large, uh, very large lowland area in, in this regions. Those regions are very, uh, very, uh, uh, in dangerous was uh, uh, in terms of uh, coastal flooding uh, during the hurricane uh, or typhoon seasons. Right? Okay, in terms of a trend, um, 
you can see that over, uh, from, from this diagram 1950s to now, and the, the typhoon peak intensity actually has a, has an upward trend going up. And uh, so the, if you uh, do the statistical analysis using different kind of weather, uh, global kind climate modeling, you can get some feeling that the, uh, the intensity of a typhoon is really going to increase, all right? And uh, so um, this is um, in terms of a meter per second and typhoon or hurricane typically are categorized based on the speed of a wind speed. And uh, if you uh, pay some attention to the news, I think there's a huge, a big hurricane just made a landfall in uh, United States, Louisiana states, and uh, the hurricane's name is Zeta, and uh, it's, which, which has a, uh, the, the, is a category, roughly speaking, is a category uh, two hurricanes. The so speed of the wind is somewhere between 40 and 50 meter per second that translate into somewhere roughly about 170, 75 kilometers per hour and pretty strong wind. And um, now if you look at the statistics, it also shows that over the years, the intensity of a large, uh, large or strong typhoon or winds actually is increasing. Uh, so it's showing in this particular panel here, the category four and five typhoon is actually going trending upwards, all right? Um, so what, what happened, uh, uh, the, the, what's the impacts of, of, of these kind of uh, weather events and why do we care? Of course, this is the consequences of some severe uh, 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 impacts of, uh, of a hurricane or typhoon on the coastal region. These are just some snapshots of uh, uh, super typhoon uh, high nine uh, in the uh, in, in, uh, uh, Philippine area. So the damage usually is caused by the wind itself, caused a lot of structural damage. Then there was an ocean wave. Wave uh, will cause a lot of uh, uh, erosion problems, uh, flooding problems in the co coastal region, the low lane uh, area. And uh, of course, there's a so-called storm surge, and uh, which are, uh, uh, is a very long period of wave and which will also cause the flooding and the erosion. And in some area, uh, the rain, uh, rainfall in uh, high, high intensity rainfall also cause the issues, uh, cause the erosion. And uh, so the worst part is that all these things will happen simultaneously during this uh, uh, typhoon events in the very uh, narrow regions that uh, will, will have a very severe damage, okay. Now, so um, I don't think I have a time to go through the uh, details of, of this uh, process. It simply says, um, I said this problem to understand the effect, the downstream effects of a coastal hazard or coastal impact of a typhoon or weather events, you really have to kind of start from the upstream, the jet, understanding the generation uh, mechanism that how these typhoon move across the ocean and eventually makes a landfall. And uh, to understand the generation mechanism, you really have to understand uh, atmospheric uh, dynamics. And uh, so this is really a multidisciplinary type of research, right? You want to be able to not only understand the physics, but you have to be able to want to model these model, uh, model these processes so that you can have a uh, toolbox, which you can not only uh, can you be used to perhaps forecasting uh, the, the track of a typhoon and the landfall location of a typhoon, but also you can, you also want to have a toolbox when, which will allow the city planners or the governments to do some planning for the future, uh, future situations. So um, typhoon is or hurricanes are generated by the, the weather event and uh, due to the wind field, okay, which is affected by the global climate uh, dynamics and also the atmospheric pressure. So you, you, you typically see these kind of satellite images, you see the eyes of, of the storm, which is a low pressure center. And uh, then uh, the, the depends on wh which, whether you're in the North hemisphere or South hemisphere, then the wind is going to in the counterclockwise direction or clockwise direction. 
then this storm, storm will move across the ocean, um, pick up a more strength in, in most of the cases because of the moistures in the Opon coming from the ocean. All right, so um, let me move a little bit faster. So the, this is a typical picture of the track of a, of a typhoon. And uh, the, 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 uh, then the challenge of, of uh, modeling these dynamics is that it's just the fact that the typhoon actually changed the characteristic as it moves across the ocean, depending on the temperature, it depends on the ambient uh, atmospheric conditions. Um, in some cases that the typhoon will make the, make the landfall, uh, landfall in certain part of the world, uh, for in this case is in Philippines, then the intensity will reduce, then pick up the strength again as the typhoon move into the ocean again. Okay, so um, now there are tools, there are uh, models that can be used to simulate the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the wind fields and the, in the pressure field and uh, to describe the process. But these models are not perfect. There's a lot of physics need to be under, understood proper, uh, better. And uh, so this is where the atmospheric scientists need to come in to look at the some of the detailed small scale process more carefully, very carefully, and to improve these kind of a, uh, uh, modeling toolbox tools, right? Um, now, as the, as the uh, the wind blowing over, moving over across the ocean and the ocean response and in the many different ways. And typically they will generate so-called wind wave and ocean wave, which has, a, has a, a time scale or the wave periods somewhere around 10 seconds uh, to 30 seconds, that kind of uh, time scale. But at the same time, because the moving process of this storm events, it will also generate a much longer wave uh, what we call the storm surge. Then in that, in that uh, for those wave, and the, the time scale will be much, much longer. You're talking about several hours of time scale of, as a wave period, and the, the land scale will be in terms of hundreds of kilometers, right? The wind wave, uh, the, the wavelengths will be only in the order magnitude of say 100 meters or so. So again, so this kind of physics the dynamic process is really complicated. We're talking about multi-physics and multi-scale uh, uh, type of problems. And uh, involving not only the atmosphere sciences, scientists, then we have to involve the oceanographers to understand the responses of ocean. Now, as the, um, as the typhoon or hurricane uh, makes a landfall, then the, then the both the wind field or pressure field, atmospheric pressure field and, uh, and the wave field get into very shallow water or will get into the coastal region where uh, the infrastructure, uh, people's uh, activities occur, right? And the, the process will be even more complicated because now you're talking about the interaction between winds and structures, interaction between the wave and the structures and also uh, the, the, the landform, uh, in other words, the erosion might occur, landslide might occur, so then this whole uh, uh, process need to be understood, need to get away. So we need to have a coastal engineering to come in. We need to look at uh, working with an oceanographer who are interested in the very shallow water environments, all to work together to, to uh, improve the understanding, understanding of this process. At the end, hopefully we can develop the models to describe, uh, capture most of the physics correctly. Then we have the tool to predict to uh, the future and the to work on the help the city uh, engineers to make a, a coastal planning or management policies. So that's the whole idea. Okay, now uh, I also should mention that uh, rainfall usually is a one big component, very, very imp uh, important component of the process. And in many areas, the heavy rainfall will cause a landslide and cause a flooding. And again, that's another component of the problems that we need to uh, keep in mind, or we, we need to in include. Now, all these I had, uh, is a general description of the uh, typhoons life cycles. They have not mentioned another very important aspect, which is 
the sea level rise. As we said, I mentioned that before that the, the, the climate is changing. One of the consequences of uh, climate change is the sea level rise. And uh, although sea level rise is uh, not very large quantities, and, but it is a steady quantity. So it has a much, much longer time scale again. But even if the uh, sea level rise is very gradual, let's say in Singapore area is predicted roughly speaking in a uh, year of 2100 and the sea level rise may or maybe depending on what scenario you're looking at it will be roughly speaking in about one meter or so, all right? But for the lowland country like Singapore or many other country, one, level, one meter of sea level rise makes a huge difference that make the difference of whether the certain area will be flooded, will be, uh, will be uh, impacted by the, the hurricane or not, okay? So that is a really a very important component to study, but how do we predict the sea level rise, all right? Then we really, again, have to work with the uh, climate dynamics and uh, to get involved in uh, under, uh, at least understanding the statistical properties of a sea level rise and how do you factor that into the future uh, prediction of the coastal uh, defense systems for this. Okay, so this is a simple chart. I think I should hurry up a little bit. And uh, um, this is a trend of a sea level uh, rise, global average you, is in terms of a millimeters, all right? So the upward trend is definitely there. And um, how fast this is going to uh, grow, that depends on how we, we, we uh, human really react to the situations. But we can deny, definitely not uh, able to deny that sea level is not going up. Um, but that is just the global average uh, sea level rise. And, uh, but important thing, however, is that the sea level rise is not homogeneous, uniform or constant uh, everywhere and it actually changes quite significantly uh, spatially, right? In South China Sea, it happened to be the area that the, the sea level rise rate is pretty high relative to other, uh, other locations, All right? So when you look at the uh, study, the sea level rise impact, you really also have to take the location into consideration. Now, see, as I said, the sea level rise, if you look at a very naive, uh, estimation one meter wa uh, water level go, uh, rise and uh, definitely is going to increase the uh, flooding um, uh, uh, the, in, in certain areas. So with this situation type of situation getting worse uh, in the uh, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, and uh, that is something that we need to uh, study. We need to actually find a way of uh, predicting them, or find a way of understanding them then help the, the, the planners to, uh, uh, to establish the proper uh, policies. And so this is simply just outlining that we, knew, we do need to have a, a forecasting and early warning system for this type of uh, uh, coastal hazard uh, in dealing with it. And then we need to uh, work with social scientists and uh, to, to develop the coastal management plan and the proper policies and in, in, the, in the sustainable and also uh, resilient way uh, to in dealing with this kind of long-term, long-time uh, problems. Now, as uh, so for uh, uh, fresh PhDs, uh, and uh, you certainly don't expect to deal with uh, the whole problem, take the whole chunk of a problem to uh, solve it at all, that's not possible. And, but as I hopefully, uh, I have outlined in such a way that you can see that we, this is a really multidisciplinary type of research. We need, there's a many, many diff, uh, different uh, topics in the basic science to understand each components of it. Then computer scientists probably can participate in terms of uh, developing these very large scale computing, uh, co uh, computing mo computer models and what would be the best way to do it and what would be the most efficient way to do it. And, uh, and uh, uh, so that, would be interesting. There's an optimization problem, and how do we actually 
predict uh, what the future should look like under the really deep uncertainty issues. Because so there's a lot of uncertainties uh, uh, in, in, uh, in many aspects, different components of this problem. So there's a lot of problems, uh, issues that can be, uh, can be addressed and need to be addressed from the most more fundamental uh, research point of view. And so I certainly will encourage uh, those who are interested in uh, this type of a problem and uh, start to think about it because uh, climate change is not going to go away. Typhoon is not going to go away. The coastal city will be continue being developed and maybe will be actually a number of co uh, mega city, coastal city will actually increase uh, uh, quite significantly in the next uh, 20 uh, to 30 years. So we need to address this problem urgently. Okay, so um, this is just a, say a typical, a typical uh, co uh, the, the map, coastal hazard map uh, for a particular cities. And uh, then the next for civil engineer, uh, engineering or civil engineers or coastal engineer, the question is uh, what kind of defense system, coastal defense system one can de de design to, to, uh, to prevent the, the, the further damage of the, uh, the, the city areas and uh, what would be the best way to do it and uh, what's the order and certainties involved, all right? So um, I think that's the, all, uh, all the material I have uh, pre uh, prepared for this presentation and uh, I, but I welcome uh, any questions related to the, uh, the PhD research at the NUS uh, or even some basic, any kind of basic uh, questions about PhD research. All right, thank you very much. Thanks, Philip, for, for a very interesting talk, a very impressive work. Um, any question from the students? Um, please, you can either type in through the Q&A panel or you raise your hand. Uh, we have like a, a few minutes only. So, oh, there's one, one question. Uh, what is it? Okay, thanks, Professor. Um, can you elaborate more for someone interested in multidisciplinary research with your department and others, what that entails? Um, Okay, the multidisciplinary uh, research usually means they involve a uh, different group of uh, uh, faculty and researchers. For example, uh, I work with the people in atmospheric or geography or on the atmospheric sciences issue like in the Python. And also for this kind of research, it has no border, right? Because the typhoon goes from one region to another region, from one country to another uh, uh, countries. So in, in, in my research, I actually collaborate mm -hmm. internationally with a, with a research institute in Taiwan or in, in China. Uh, from the scientific point of view, actually politics doesn't play a role. We all work together. Okay, we, we're really addressing the scientific issues. Mm -hmm. So in coming back to NUS and for this particular topics, we, we do have uh, departments in geography, we have a department in civil engineering, then we have a research institute called Tropical Marine uh, uh, Research Institute, TMSI, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, Marine Sciences Institute. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I work with uh, I work with all these people together addressing, they will, they will take on different specialty area, then we'll get together and put the puzzle together into one package. Thanks. There's a quick question uh, we can answer. Um, so at your lab, are you focusing now more on the generation of ocean wave or the coastal response like the morphodynamic change by the storm? Uh, yes, in, in, uh, thank you for uh, asking that question. In, in, in my department, my group, um, our research is multi, multi uh, prompt and uh, we're not only doing uh, numerical modeling, trying to model the waves, right? We're talking about there's ocean wave and storm surge, and how do we actually model them because they have a different scale, time scale and the spatial scale. But at the same time, we also have a laboratory, physical laboratory at NUS. We do experiments with in the, in the wave tank, we generate wave in the wave tank, and uh, we have a sediment transport uh, facility to look at morph morphological change on the different kind of uh, forcing or loading, we'll call it, namely wave and currents. Now, the reason we, want, we, 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 we do the laboratory experiments really is to get the inside deeper understanding of the process 
so uh, at the same time, we can use these data obtained in the laboratory to validate some of the numerical model, right? In the process of we translate into a model and to making, make sure that the model we develop actually are correct, accurate. So, so yes, uh, in, in our group, we are dealing with this type of problem. Cool. Yeah, so I guess in your lab, you have a very big swimming pool. Uh, uh, <laughs> yes, um, right now we have a two-dimensional two wave tank, or three-dimensional long wave tank is about 40, 50 cool. meter long, mm -hmm. and the two or three, uh, two meter wide, mm -hmm. and about also have a, a three-dimensional basin mm -hmm. is about uh, 10 meter to times two meter, 20 meter mm -hmm. type of uh, uh, 2D space, mm -hmm. and water depth is about one to two meters. Yeah. Yes, a lot of fun. So for those of you who want to do PhD, make sure you can swim, okay? So, uh, <laughs> all right, just kidding. Okay, thanks, uh, Professor Liu. Uh, thank you for the talk. And I think if you have questions, please uh, email uh, Prof Liu uh, or visit the, the booth, uh, e-booth for the civil engineering.